What did we see in week one of the new season? New teams. New stadiums. Same passion. Same thrills and spills. Welcome to MLS in 2017. We begin in the Western Conference at BBVA Compass Stadium, where the Houston Dynamo played host to the defending MLS Cup champions, Seattle Sounders FC. What a baptism by fire for new Houston head coach Wilmer Cabrera. The Colombian is tasked with galvanizing a team that finished dead last in the Western Conference last season, and he couldn't have been handed a more daunting opening assignment. But Seattle are proof of how quickly fortunes can change in MLS. The appointment of Brian Schmetzer as head coach and arrival of Uruguayan playmaker Nicholas Ladero last July kick-started a run that carried them all the way to MLS Cup glory with the bonus of a fit again Clint Dempsey. Can the Sounders continue that success in 2017? Mike Sewell had the call of the match. Houston win the ball back in midfield. Elise. Of orange shirts to aim at, one of them being Kyoto, who should have hit the target from there. Discussions in the Seattle defense, but Romel Kyoto should have forced a save at least out of Fry. Here's Torres, at least to his right. As he plays forward, here's Torres again. A bit heavy on the touch, it's eventually cleared. Ladero, heavy touch from him, Clark shoots! And Fry saves. Well, Seattle gave themselves problems by not clearing Ladero at fault there and Clark close to giving Houston the lead. Demarcus Beasley's throw is headed in by Kyoto. Clark on towards Torres. He wins the free kick of his namesake, Roman Torres. Strong challenge from the Seattle defender. Sounders have seven men in that wall. Houston wanting them to be a little further back. Here's Eric Torres, and he's crept the ball in under the goalkeeper. And just over two years after joining the club, Eric Torres gets his first MLS goal for Houston. Alonso pushes it forward to Ladero, and in turn finds Dempsey. He's lost possession. Here's Kyoto, support to his left. Romel Kyoto goes straight for goal and finishes superbly. A debut goal for Romel Kyoto and one to remember. Alonso, Dempsey ahead of him. Two Houston players for company. Back to Alonso again. Now the play spread to Jones on this near side. Ladero in support, but Jones decides to go it alone. Derek pushes it away straight to the feet of Clint Dempsey, who sweeps the ball in on his return to the team and his return to his home state. Clint Dempsey puts Seattle back in the match. Good delivery by Jones. Derek could have done better. Dempsey punishes him. Houston 2, Seattle 1. Morris into Fernandez, back to Morris again. Now Roldan, support to his left from Jones. Here's a good opportunity for Jovin Jones. Ladero! Very close to drawing Seattle level. Nicolas Ladero just forced wide. It's just not happening for the MLS Cup holders. They have a target on their back. Maybe it's the target right here above the crest. I don't know where the target is, but teams are going to come out and press us. That's the lesson we learned. Adrian Heath's Minnesota United made their debut in Portland, a daunting place for a team's first game in Major League Soccer. Minnesota have recruited cautiously with their highest profile arrival Kevin Molino included here, and they were soon behind. 14 minutes in, a Diego Valeri free kick found its way to Lawrence Olam, whose mishit finish found its way past John Alvola, the first MLS goal of the season goal on his Portland debut for the Kenyan Olam. 
This inaugural match was always going to be difficult for Minnesota, but they held strong until halftime. No real surprise, though, when two minutes into the second half, Valeri headed home across from Portland's new man, Sebastian Blanco. But if Portland thought that they were home free up 2-0, they had to think again in the 79th minute. The man they call Superman, Christian Ramirez, living up to his billing and giving Minnesota late hope. Hope that was extinguished three minutes later when Fernando Adi was pulled back by Vadim Demidov. Valeri was given a chance of getting his second of the game from the penalty spot. Avboga guessed the right way, but Valeri's power and placement put Portland out of sight. Leading into stoppage time, it was a humbling debut for the expansion team, but what happened next turned into something worse. From a Minnesota corner, possession was given away, and Darlington Nagby's powerful run started a deadly counterattack. Minnesota scrambled. Nagby found Adi, and Portland's leading scorer from 2016 got his first of 2017 with a really precise finish that he and the home fans hugely enjoyed. And he wasn't finished as the agony piled on for Minnesota. This time it was Adi all on his own as the visitors' tired defense parted, and Adi made this the biggest ever defeat for an expansion team on debut in MLS. Needless to say, much work to do for Heath and the Loons, while Portland start with a bang. It was West versus East in Colorado as the Rapids played host to the New England Revolution. Colorado's impressive defensive record was a highlight of last season, and goalkeeper Zach McMath was literally on hand to ensure they began 2017 in the same vein. Four minutes after denying Kai Kamara, McMath's Rebs counterpart, Cody Cropper, thwarted Kevin Doyle. The Irishman was finding space inside the Rebs' penalty area, and from Mark Birch's cross, went close again. Pablo Mastorani is now in his fourth season as Colorado coach, and six minutes into the second half, saw his team finally find a way through albeit in rather scrappy circumstances. With Dominic Baggi heading the Rapids into the lead. Though only the sheer determination of Jared Watts made it possible. That earned Colorado an eighth one nothing win at Dick's Sporting Goods Park in the last 12 months. It was a day for the goalkeepers at RFK Stadium as Bill Hamid and Tim Melia turned on the style in an open game Meade was first to shine, getting a hand to Benny Failhaber's free kick and denying SKC an early lead. Hamid's save was impressive, but Melia was made to work that much harder three minutes later after an intricate DC United buildup. Melia coming out to smother Julian Boucher, but doing so clumsily. The referee gives it a thought and then awards the penalty. It was left to Marcelo Sarvas to convert Amelia made the save with relative ease, but his follow-up stop on Patrick Mullins was something to behold. And when Amelia was left helpless by one of his players, another helped him out. Roger Espinosa's flick from Lloyd Sam's corner was going in until Jimmy Medrana headed it off the line. Then Dom Dwyer was on hand to clear off the line again before Amelia made yet another save. No goals, but plenty of entertainment and two outstanding performances from the keepers. Another interconference matchup saw Dominic Kinnear's San Jose go in search of a first MLS win over the Montreal Impact. 17 minutes in, he was treated to a sublime finish from Anibal Godoy, whose first MLS goal in 10 months had a little more finesse than the celebration that followed. Montreal rarely threatened, and when they did, they were unable to find the target, in this case via the foot of Marco Donadell. The task was made even harder when, midway through the second half, Hussan Kamara's reckless challenge on Godoy gave referee Valdemaro Toledo little choice but to add a second yellow card to the one Kamara received at the end of the first half. 
Prior to this match, veteran striker Chris Wondolowski had scored a remarkable 21 goals in 30 MLS appearances for the Quakes against the three Canadian clubs. He'll feel he should have added to that tally and increased the margin of victory with five minutes to go. LA Galaxy start the post-Bruce Arena era by hosting FC Dallas. New LA coach Kurt Analfo previously worked under Arena as lead man for LA Galaxy 2. One of his first tasks was to replace Steven Gerrard and Robbie Keane, and French winger Romain Alessandrini and Jermaine Jones are the high-profile arrivals. FC Dallas will remember their last trip to StubHub Center fondly, as the goalless draw in October secured Oscar Pereja's team the Supporter Shield. However, they start this season without their influential playmaker, Mauro Diaz, who's recovering from an Achilles tendon injury. Dallas will hope that Maxi Uruti helps fill the board. An early test for two ambitious clubs. Your commentators are Stuart Robinson and Dave Farrar. There's a cost to Jones across, and dangerously so. Now Lama. Can he pick the runner? He nearly can, and it's Barrius off the line, Van Damme. What a good cross it was. Just lifted in. Acosta's made a late run to get there. Just didn't get enough power on it. Chance now for Aruti to pick it up. Coleman in front of him with the decoy run. And Aruti bides his time and fires FC Dallas in front. It's Max Aruti and FC Dallas on their way. Well, to start with, I thought he'd taken too long. It goes back between the legs. Vendom, he strikes it really well. And into the far corner. That's what it means to him. Well, that is not the best challenge. Romney fouled. LA have a penalty. Rana can't believe it. Kevin Stott saw it and pointed straight to the spot. Dos Santos against Sites. No mistake at all. In front for five minutes. But now it's LA Galaxy who make their first mark on the season. And you feel as though they needed that lucky break. They weren't playing particularly well, LA Galaxy. It's going to be Gio Dos Santos with this corner. Oh, it's a free header for Jones, denied by the post. So close to turning it round completely and going in front. Well, he does really well. Hits it down, does everything right. Here's Lamar. A chance here to cut inside. Kellen Acosta fires Dallas back in front. They worked it well down the left-hand side. They kept the ball in the danger area. He just opened up the goal for himself, and I think Brian Rowe thought he was going to try and bend it into that far corner. In from Van Damme. Great quality! Was that the chance? Ariel Lassiter couldn't take it. First game in charge for Kurt and Alpha. Ends in defeat, and it finishes LA Galaxy 1. FC Dallas 2. Atlanta has joined the MLS party, and the ATL made their ambitions clear when they hired Gerardo Tata Martino, whose resume includes head coach of Barcelona and the Argentina national team. The blend of designated players Miguel Amiron and Joseph Martinez, who's on loan from Serie A side Torino, with MLS veterans Michael Parkhurst and striker Jacob Peterson, have some experts already predicting great things for Atlanta. Despite topping the Eastern Conference standings again last season, the MLS Cup still eludes the Red Bulls. Captain Dax McCarty has departed, but Bradley Wright Phillips should ensure that the Red Bulls are contenders once again. This match offered an early indication of whether Atlanta's ambitions can be achieved. Commentary from David Prutton and Dan Roebuck. Should be cleared away by Roya and here's Braden Wright. Phillips can't get to it though, and the pressure will stay on. Now it's with Tyrone Mears. Ball inside the box here. It's decent delivery! Van 
fantastic finish. Assad sliding in, and Atlanta United draw first blood. First ever MLS goal. Really good finish, beating Luis Robles. It is Atlanta United that lead the Red Bulls by a goal to nil. Now they got it. Can he find Martinez? Terrific stop from Robles to keep the score at one. Tremendous reactive save from Robles. Long. That's beaten to it. And once again, it's Amaron breaking forwards here. Amaron! That would have been something special. He couldn't play Martinez in because he was in an offside position when the move originated. Tried to chip the keeper in spectacular fashion. Grella will pick it up. Now it's with Pedernal. Has to get rid quickly. Ricochet is for Question. Right, Phillips looking to flick it on for Etienne. Now it's with Question. Space for Felipe. Left hand side on his right foot with a cover. And a slip and a drop. And he's just wide. Straight at him. See where Felipe wants to go, that top corner, but that's relatively straightforward for the goalkeeper. Corner to the far post, and the header this time does go in! Thumping effort, Red Bulls have got an equaliser here. Royer round the back post, beats Khan, and we're 1-1 with 15 minutes to go. When you've got the size and the power that Roy has got to be able to meet it at the exact perfect time, goalkeeper's got no chance. Felipe's on the move, Red Bulls with their tails up. This is Roya, and now it's Grella. He's got options here, Loris is one of them! I oh, must go in, it does! And Red Bulls have turned this around against Atlanta United. All sorts of gaps at the back. Atlanta unable to deal with Lawrence's run, and the Red Bulls lead by two goals to one. of things in this huge crowd and well designated uh, designated players have performed well now then there's a red card being shown here well and Carmona was it four I wonder it looked a tad sly shall we say I think he knew exactly what he was doing Carmona when he got that close to the side of Felipe Marcus forward Martinez he's onside here and still going well that was very late, and as the flag went up, it does not matter anyway. The Red Bulls have beaten Atlanta United by two goals to one. Imperfect is what I would call that performance. Atlanta tested us in big ways in the first half, and you know we took a punch but hung in there. For the most part, the second half, the effort was really good and obviously a great comeback and a lot of spirit within the team. This meeting of teams that finished 9th and 10th in the Eastern Conference last season came to life in less than three minutes. An instinctive point-blank save by MLS debutant Jorge Brava keeping out Columbus striker Justin Miram. It didn't take long for Miram to make an important contribution. After a patient Columbus buildup from one side of the field to the other, Miram provided the cross for Ethan Finley to head home Crew SC's opening goal of 2017. Early in the second half, some fancy footwork from Federico Higuain allowed him to set up Ola Kamara. But Brava stood firm in front of the Chicago goal to stop Columbus from extending their lead. The 35-year-old Uruguayan's display proved crucial for the fire because with 17 minutes to go, David Akam provided the equalizer. The Ghanaian winger then caused panic in the Columbus defense, using his pace and strength to fend off substitute Artur before teeing up Michael Delieu. But Zach Steffen, making his MLS debut, stood his ground to ensure the points were shared. The Vancouver Whitecaps came into their regular season opener after an impressive CONCACAF Champions League win against the New York Red Bulls and were largely the better side in this one. Their 16-year-old midfield prodigy Alfonso Davies had an outstanding game, and his smooth run led to a chance for Christian Tachera. It was a tight game, but Philadelphia showed their teeth early in the second half, 
Alejandro Bedoya played in on the angle, but unable to beat David Osted. The closest either side came to a goal was in the 66th minute, when a Jordan Harvey shot made its way past Andre Blake, but was cleared off the line by Keegan Rosenberry. And the Union were eventually able to get it clear. Some danger from Vancouver, but a point for each in the standings at the final whistle. Last year's MLS Cup finalists, Toronto FC, took the Canadian flag to Utah for a cross-conference meeting with Real Salt Lake. And they went close to taking the lead after 15 minutes through Josie Altador. Sebastian Javinko opened his goal-scoring account in 2016 with a penalty on the opening weekend of the season and was given the chance to do just the same here as RSL keeper Nick Romando brought down the former league MVP in the box. But when you're facing a penalty-saving expert like Romando, there are no guarantees. And it was the 37-year-old's record-enhancing 29th MLS penalty save. Both sides were left searching for the finishing product. Kyle Beckerman's inviting chip didn't get the end product it deserved from Joao Plata. A scoreless start to the season for RSL and TFC. New York City FC were the visitors for the first MLS game at the New Orlando City Stadium. The identity of the opposition made it an even bigger day for Orlando head coach Jason Kreiss, who left New York City after just one season in charge. The party got off to a whimper for the home team when their star player, Kaka, hurt his left hamstring 11 minutes into the match and was forced to leave the field. The Brazilian star is expected to miss six weeks as he rehabilitates. It didn't stop the home team from taking the lead, though. Kyle Lahren has scored 31 goals in his first two MLS seasons and opened up his third in style, heading home across from Giles Barnes to a raucous reception. Patrick Vieira's team made the playoffs last season before running out of steam and nearly found an equalizer when their new Finnish acquisition, Alexander Ring, was denied by Joe Bendik. NYCFC's best opportunity came in the second half when a young player from whom great things are expected this season, Jack Harrison, beat Bendik, but Jose Aja somehow cleared that shot away. Both teams then had chances in what was a close game. Carlos Rivas used his strength and pace, but was let down by his finishing ability as he blazed one over the bar. And then Sean Acoli, on as a substitute for his MLS debut with his new club, showed good awareness to find a chance, but found Bendik to be too good. Orlando's big day marked with a big win. Orlando and NYCFC's city rivals, the New York Red Bulls, were the only Eastern Conference winners on the opening weekend of the season. Five of the other nine sides were involved in draws. Early days in the West, with Portland and Dallas producing big wins in different ways, and Houston makes it a fresh start with a victory. Colorado and San Jose were also on three points after one game. So we're up and running. The champion's defense starts with defeat. And the new arrivals both score. But quickly discovered how tough this league is. This copyrighted telecast of Major League Soccer may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.